Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. Well, welcome back to Right on the Money, and Happy New Year to you and yours. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about good debt and bad debt with Tom Hagnan, nationally recognized retirement speaker and best-selling author, Paychex and Playtex, and your other book, which I really like, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, which is a PBS special, and it's still on television. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a real Shakespearean guy. I don't wake up at night and want to read the King James version of what they were doing back in England 400 years ago. Right. But I love this line. He goes, neither, this is Will, Bill Shakespeare saying, neither a borrower or a lender be for loan doth off lose both itself and friend. I love that line. And then the other one is, if you can't spend your way out of a recession or borrow your way out of debt, you can't. You just cannot spend your way out. You agree right. with that? I agree. And I think if most people followed those, they'd be better off. Okay. So this discussion about good debt or bad, bad debt, I don't know if there is good debt. Okay. And so let's say maybe there's better debt and worse debt. Well, let me okay? stop you there because I heard a lot of financial advisors, a lot of color commentators out there saying, well, a mortgage is a good debt. Yeah. Well, look, a mortgage would fit into the better type of debt. Like if you're going to be okay. in debt. Okay. So are... I can't get you to say good. You're just saying better. Well, look, um, I've had debt. I, mm -hmm. I, I've had a mortgage and I, you know, so I think when you use debt properly, if you mm -hmm. understand how to use mm -hmm. debt properly, where you don't get over your head, where you keep it very manageable, if you're taking debt for appreciating assets. Mm -hmm. So Homes, typically, although not always in Arizona, but yeah. homes historically have gone up over time. Real estate mm -hmm. has gone up over time. Um, things that, that appreciate are examples of maybe better debt. But again, you don't want to get so far out of debt that your debt payment is more than your income. And so you've got to be very careful. Um, debt can be okay if you manage it properly, mm -hmm. if you use it wisely. You know, um, some examples, mortgages, business loans, like think of all the people who would never been able to start Microsoft or any of these, Apple. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to take some debt on their credit card to start these things, right? And so um, there are times when if you use debt wisely that you can put yourself into situations where um, things can go up in mm -hmm. value. It can create value, okay? But then think about this. Most small businesses fail. So if they took all this debt to start a business and then it failed, many people get just um, wiped out by, mm. by, by going too far into debt. Okay, now one of the reasons we're talking about good debt and bad debt in this segment is because we know people do want to save. They do want to have a good retirement. But we have to take, clear the deck with something. Maybe we can't pay our debts all off and then start. Maybe we got to do a little bit of both. Do a little bit of pay down on the bad debt, putting a little money aside. I don't think there's yin or yang, right or wrong here, but we need to start it. That's the whole point. Yeah, and I think we're going to talk about some of that in, in another section. Um, let me just say one thing about student loans. You know, a lot of people put student loans in good debt. I would say be very, very careful. We now have a problem with all these students who took out these huge student loans to get some degree that now they're working at Starbucks and they can't mm -hmm. even use their degree and they're in debt $100,000, $125,000. That was not a good mm -hmm. debt, okay? And so like with my kids, I've said I'm not going to pay for all their college but I will make sure they get out of college without being in debt. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll do. But they've got to they've got to contribute. They've got to work. But I don't want my kids to be strapped mm -hmm. with all this this massive student loan debt. That, that is what's hurting a lot of the millennials today. Well, you know, time. There's a lot of politics involved in this now because they're talking about, hey, how are we going to help settle help, help these kids settle their debts? Well, we should have helped them not get into debt, right. okay? Right. And we should have said, hey, here's a here's a work program. Get an extra job. Do some of this. Maybe take a loan for the tuition or something. But I mm -hmm. mean, some of these people they go on four five years and they think it's party time for five years mm -hmm. on a loan and then they forget they got to pay this back so so that mm -hmm. can be that can be very difficult there's also some worse debt okay and that's debt to buy depreciating assets 
Cars mm-hmm. go down in value. Mm-hmm. Phones go down in value. iPads go down in value. You know, uh, boats go down in value. RVs go down in value. Furniture, clothing, travel. None of those go up in value. They all go down in value. And you want to be very careful about ever using debt for things that go down in value. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a hard because you name, you name some things that are just lifestyle issues. I have to have clothes. I have to live in a, yeah, I have I have to a, live in a place. And, I have to have a look, car. I will tell you a little story. Like I've bought my cars for cash for the last 25 years. I haven't done a loan on a car since I was a second lieutenant in the Army. And you want to know what? I now have a car payment. But the reason I did it was because I got interest rate at 1%. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have the money that I can pay it off. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was using it as debt. But I mean, Mm -hmm. when I can get something at 1% and spread that thing out over a few years, I'm okay with that because I'm earning Mm -hmm. better than 1% in my other uh, investments. And so uh, for me, it's the first time I've had a car payment in 30 Mm -hmm. years. So again, I think it's, I'm not talking out of both sides of my mouth there, I don't think, because I've I've got the adequate resources to Mm -hmm. pay for cash. I'm choosing to use debt for my advantage because Mm -hmm. I got a lower interest rate. But in general, it does Mm -hmm. not make sense to take a lot of debt on depreciating assets. Okay, so, uh, you know, we want to have an appreciating asset. Actually, the only things I can think of is savings, you know, getting into the kind of investments and savings accounts that will secure my future. If I'm going to take a loan, like you've suggested on your house, one of the big things I can see is it's so low now, zero one percent sometimes cash is king and you want to be able to have in these times you know you don't know are you guaranteed a job right. maybe you need to have some cash and most planners talk about having 90 days i think we need to pull that out to about six months at least six months yeah. at least six months and cash is king and especially if we see a low interest rate deflationary type mm-hmm. environment which i believe that we're going to be in for a very long time cash is king and cash flow is king mm-hmm. all right but but let me just elaborate on this depreciating asset thing so let's say you you're you're you take a loan on a car and tr- Traditionally, rates were mm-hmm. seven, five, seven, eight, nine percent. Well, what would happen is the value of the car is going down, but the price you're paying for the car is going up because those interest rates keep. You know, you if you if you buy a car for, for ten thousand dollars and you're financing it at seven or eight percent, mm-hmm. you're going to pay twenty or twenty five thousand by the time that car's done. You're not paying ten, but yet your car is worth less than the ten. And you're going to be paying 20000 for a car that in five years is worth 2000 mm-hmm. And that's where it doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, be very careful with debt. Okay. And when we're talking about debt, I'm thinking about, you know, I like Ben Franklin on my currency rather than George Washington. Nothing wrong with the first president of the United States, but I think I like Benjamin's better than George Washington. Right. $100 bills versus $1 well, bill. Well, this is what Ben, this is what Ben, wise Ben said. He said, rather go to bed supperless than to rise in the morning in debt. Think about that. Yeah. You'd rather deny yourself rather than go ahead and get into debt. Well, and that's one thing that I think baby boomers haven't done a great job of is they haven't Mm -hmm. denied themselves. Mm -hmm. It's all about me and more and right now. And what I would say is save up until you can buy it for cash. Mm -hmm. Don't put everything on the credit card. If you're going to use debt, use it for your advantage, not so that it can take advantage of you. Of course, we just came out of the holiday season, and we had there's a lot of spending going on back then. Everybody's credit cards, their home equity loans, they're really tapped out. I noticed, I don't know who wrote this or quoted it, but I love it. It says, Christmas is the season when you buy this year's gifts with next year's money. Yeah. No, that's another way of putting it. I know. I just So, well, Tommy, our goal to talk about debt management in this is because Really, people can't save until we get a little bit of control of this. Right. So, And we do have tactical and strategic ways to save money, not only for other things like maybe buying a house, maybe your child's education, but big one, the retirement time, our golden years. Yeah, and we got to put money away. Look, there was a guy who said, most Americans would be millionaires except for two things. They spend too much on their cars and they get divorced. So the moral of the story, Steve, is drive a used car and stick with your first spouse, all right? (laughs) But look, I've driven used cars for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, The last brand new car I bought for myself was when I was a second lieutenant right out of college. I was young, I was dumb, I bought Mm -hmm. a brand new car. Even now, I can buy brand new cars, whatever I want for cash, I don't, all right? I buy a car with the the one I just got a truck and it had 12,000 or 11,000 miles on it. It was two years old, I got it for half price. Mm -hmm. Well. That's the way I buy my vehicles. And you think I live any less of a lifestyle? No. Mm -hmm. Most people are spending way too much on cars, way too much on cars. Well, I'm looking at this quote from uh, James Bassford. He says, the man who has enough money to pay his debts, does not have enough money to pay his debts, has too much of everything else. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you kind of an idea. Tommy's giving you ideas like cash is king. 
I want to pay when I can, unless there's a screaming deal, like you said, on the on the car issue. Uh, we're trying to do this. Why are we trying to reduce our debt? Because we want to shift from reducing our debt, making payments to the credit card, our lease uh, vehicle, our mortgage, if we can. And I want to move over and start paying myself first. Right. And that's the big thing, Tommy. You we're gotta, not paying ourselves first. No, you were, we're at the end of the line. And when I was, you know, I used to be a financial advisor, and I tell people, look, you're standing at the end of the line, and you're paying everybody else. You're at the end of the line. My job is to move you to the front of the line. You got to pay yourself first. I want to thank Tommy Hagner for being my guest. But before I go, remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said: "Make all you can, give all you can, save all you can." I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week right here on Right on the Money. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you use.